Hi everyone and a very happy but belated birthday to Maud Hart Lovelace, the author of the Betsy and Tacey series and also a happy but belated birthday to Betsy Ray. So um, Maud Hart Lovelace is the author of the Betsy Tacey books and she gave the same birthday that she had to her character of Betsy Ray and I think it's just a lovely and very exciting day. Unfortunately I was not able to get a video up yesterday on the day of April 25th but I am here doing a review of Betsy in spite of herself this year myself and Kelly from Books I'm Not Reading and Katie from Life Between Words are hosting a year-long read-along through the Betsy Tacey books and then some of the Deep Valley books after the Betsy Tacey series is done. Uh, so this was the second of the high school books, Betsy in Spite of Herself, and I enjoyed this one just as much as I did um, Heaven to Betsy, and I am just so... It, this series is an utter delight. Um, it's just the... It brings such joy to my day whenever I'm reading it and I just end up plowing through them. I don't intend to read, I think this other one I read, uh, I, Betsy in Spite of Herself, I read in a day and I didn't mean to do that, but I just couldn't stop reading once I was reading. Um, one thing that I really appreciate that Maud Hart Lovelace does in this series is that um, our heroine is definitely flawed. She's not this perfect um, human being who feels like you can't relate to her. She's definitely very flawed and she makes some blunders in this book. Um, but I am all the more fond of her because of it, because she feels like someone I can relate to and um, like a kindred spirit and just she feels very flesh and blood to me. Um, so there's some really fun things that happen in this one. I want to get to the um, the actual book, though. Uh, so it's Betsy's sophomore year, so she's a little bit more established at school. She has a group of friends, um, but she does have a new love interest this year. Um, and this entire book, I didn't understand kind of why she picked the love interest that she did have. And I just thought... He didn't seem like someone that suited her at all, but she has to really figure that out for herself. And she does. And I think um, you as a reader kind of see her grow and change through that. As always, there's some humor in this and um, their English teacher at the beginning uh, or at the end of their freshman year said that they would be tested on Ivanhoe at the beginning of the school year. And that so over the summer, he wanted them to be reading Ivanhoe. So here's the picture from that chapter. And so um, two of the guys, Cab and Tony, um, have not read Ivanhoe uh, up until two days before school. And they keep saying they're going to read the noble work. Um, and then basically ask Betsy for the spark notes version, uh, for their essay that they're going to be writing and just different humorous things that I don't want to ruin, um, occur because of that. So I really love the, um, the friendships that she has with the guys as well as the girls. And it just brings, um, such a like liveliness to the, um, such a liveliness to the storyline. Uh, Let's see, what else do we have here? Um, there's more football games that they're going to. Uh, there is a bit with, um, this chapter is called Rosie Apple Blossoms. And I love um, Betsy's English teacher who is per a, a grump. And they all kind of think that he doesn't really want to be teaching English. That's just the job he was given. Um, critiques Betsy's phrase, Rosie Apple Blossoms, um, and says that apple blossoms aren't rosy. And, um, I, he's just very picky with her. Um, and I, it was so funny because I recently saw a picture of apple blossoms and I was like, they're definitely rosy. I, I don't know what his issue was. Uh, so another thing that I like in this is that we see a, a bit more of Joe Willard and he stands out so much from all the other guys though. He's much more independent. Um, he has to take care of himself. He doesn't have parents and, um, he's, he's just different. He's different than everybody else. And so Betsy has kind of a hard time forming a friendship with him, but she knows that she wants to know him better. She wants to, um, he, he seems like he's really special and he's worth getting to know, but she just has a hard time kind of breaking through his exterior. Um, so kind of the Mr. Darcy type vibe going on 
And we're also seeing Julia growing up more and um, it's her senior year and she's really thinking about what she's going to be doing the next year. She's been doing music lessons for a long time and it's neat to see her kind of going after her hopes and dreams. Uh, a big part of the story is that Betsy gets to go to Milwaukee, Wisconsin to visit Tiv. So here is uh, the chapter picture for when she's traveling on the train. She feels very grown up going to see Tib, and uh, it's really wonderful to see them reunited, to see Tib's family, and to see what a thriving German community there was in Milwaukee at the time. Um, and it's just really neat. Tib speaks German regularly. They go to see German plays, uh, and it's just neat to see that bit of culture that her family really hasn't lost. Um, and her parents are second generation German, and it's it's just really neat to see. Uh, and Betsy, I think, is kind of enjoying it and taking it all in. And she comes back with some different resolutions to kind of pursue this love interest that she does have. Uh, and so that really changes then how her spring is, kind of who she's spending her time with. Um, and... She's also going to dances for the first time because she has the idea to do a leap year dance. And let's see if I can find the picture for that. Here's the leap year dance. So I like getting to know about that tradition that if it was a leap year, you could do a leap year dance and then the girls could invite the guys. Um, uh, you know, so kind of like a Sadie Hawkins dance, but you would only have these in a leap year. Uh, so learning about you know, different traditions I didn't know about, um, different foods I didn't know about. And this one also, there were popovers, which is kind of like a Yorkshire pudding, but you just put it in a muffin tin. That's the, that's what, how Google explained it to me. And then there was another food item. Oh yes. Um, a cool thing that Betsy heard for the first time in Milwaukee was the Merry Widow Waltz. Um, so if you look up the Merry Widow Waltz, I don't want to get like copyrighted. That's why I'm not putting it in. If you look up the Merry Widow Waltz, it will sound familiar. It's something that I think we've all heard and just hadn't known the name of it. Um, so then it just really took off. And there was also, um, there were Merry Widow hats, which were these big elaborate hats. Um, that you would be dressed up in. And also um, there was a Merry Widow Sunday that they ate. And it was interesting. I looked it up and it had pineapple, cherries, um, and strawberries on top of vanilla ice cream. And then maybe one other topping, but it was just a bunch of different fruit um, that was put onto ice cream. Uh, let's see what else there is. The essay contest is in this one again. And it's neat to see Betsy working harder this time at it um, and really wanting to do well at it. Um, and she's, you know, competing against Joe Willard again. Um, so there's kind of this weird kind of bond that they have and that they're, they're both really um, good at putting pen to paper. And even though uh, they kind of, like I said, it's like she has trouble kind of furthering their relationship and seeing exactly getting to know him better. Um, she is, she really does want to know him better. Um, she wants to, yeah, just be his friend. Um, so they are, they both have that and she does see him regularly while she's kind of preparing for the essay contest. Um, so I enjoyed this, even though Betsy, uh, kind of, I was face palming at her decisions in this one in regards to the romantic relationship kind of not knowing herself well, I still really enjoyed it because I'm so fond of Betsy. And I think I knew that it was going to turn out well in the end. Uh, again, I was so struck by just what a wonderful family Betsy is a part of with Mr. and Mrs. Ray and Margaret, her younger sister, and Julia, her older sister, and then Anna, who's their housekeeper. Um, just such a lovely, lovely group of people. And I just love spending time with them. Um, yeah. So that's my review for Betsy in spite of herself. Um, and I think in this book, the title kind of uh, sums it up. You know, she, she maybe tries to be these other things uh, for um, someone that she's pursuing. And then she realizes in the end that you can only really be yourself. There's only one you. And at the end of the day, she's just best at being herself and not trying to be someone else. And so she kind of 
Um, she really grows in this book and it's beautiful to see. So I am looking forward to the next one in the series, which is Betsy was a junior. Um, and please let me know how you felt about Betsy in spite of herself. And I will see you guys, uh, for another video and I hope you're having a lovely day and, uh, have a lovely weekend.